Previously on Homesteady. We've had a strange development the last day here with our goats and uh, she's not gonna make it, she's dead. She's. Nice. So some of you have suggested things like a vitamin B shot, uh, doing uh, an iron supplement, a drench that will help fight anemia. Uh, we've learned a lot from your comments. We thank you so much for sharing that. We're going to be getting some of these things, talking to our vet today, uh, and, and just like, we really appreciate the comments. We're not ignoring you. It's just, it takes a while to produce the video, release it, get the advice, put it into practice, edit that video, and release that video. So I'm really, I'm, I'm in a great mood because I feel like, okay, we were doing something, we were trying hard, but it was the wrong thing. Getting the vet out here who knows our area, knows our problems. We're, again, you know, we're not out of the woods. We just begun the dosing, but I'm very hopeful right now. You want this hand on too? One? Yeah, right there. Easy. Easy spot. We just gotta get them all in the habit of... <laughs> you look like daddy. Look daddy. Is it you? Oh, you do. Look here. Look at your dumb cheeks. It's hat season. That means we don't have to do our hair now. It's my favorite time of the year. <laughs> Vloggers love winter. Hat season. Let's see my goofy hat and my goofy morning hair. It is cold today. We got a real cold snap. Um, yeah, real cold. It's getting. It's gonna come warmer again. But boy, it feels like winter today. It's always a big change when you lose an animal. You come into the barn and you're used to the habit of checking on that animal, especially if they've been getting sicker and sicker like with Lacey. So every day we come and, you know, come into her stall, check on her. At when, you probably can relate if you ever lost an animal. Uh, it takes your mind a little while to recognize that it's not there anymore. Sometimes you think you see it, you hear it. Uh, so coming in the barn now, it's quiet. There's no goats and it's a little bit strange, it's sad. You know, you, you have the habit of like, I'm gonna check on Lacey. Oh, no reason to check on Lacey, she's dead. So it is, it's sad. And it's one of those things, you know, when you lose animals, it just takes, takes a little time. Uh, now you'll notice I said there's no goats in the barn. Uh, there's no goats on the farm anymore. Come in every morning to check on Lacey, and as soon as you'd open the door, she'd go, meh, you know, so we, okay, she's still alive, she's still alive. And uh, you wait for that now, and it, you don't hear it. So, Lacey was doing real poorly, and it was after Gizmo died, we, when Lacey was doing so bad, we decided that it would be best to find Ruby another home. Beautiful go. Gotta say, Gizmo made some beautiful babies. Look at that coat, those moon spots. She is gorgeous. And she's actually going to the homestead that we bought Gizmo from. Gizmo's previous owner who we bought her from, 
She wanted Ruby, and uh, we couldn't think of a better home to send her to. When Lacey was doing so bad, we decided that it would be best to find Ruby another home. Afraid that we would just have her and no other goats to be with her, which is what would have ended up happening. Thankfully, I was, I've kept in contact with Gizmo's breeder. She's been one of our really helpful goat mentors. She loved Gizmo. She was her favorite kid of the year, the year she had her. So when I told her we were looking to find a home, she was happy to say like, oh, I'm so tempted. That's my favorite breeding, Gizmo with Quinn. And Ruby was such a beautiful little doling. She agreed to, to take her. She's having a nice, nice home with other goats. We were really happy that, that we could find Ruby a home like that. What are you doing? What are you guys up to? We're cleaning out the chicken stall right now. Sometimes this will just smell really bad, but right now it's not smelling really bad. That's because we're cleaning it. If we left it like this for longer, it would smell very bad. So that's why we clean it. I can move it for you. Yeah, if you pull it forward, that'll make it a world easier for. Got yourself a big poop lollipop there, kid. already our puddles so we're getting it fixed within the next couple weeks so it's kind of good we have no goats here since we'll be losing a lot of a lot of our paddock space there's a lot of things we do differently next time we have goats Ooh, cold out there we have had that wetness issue out there for a long time and we've been talking and talking about let's fix it, let's fix it and a couple were asking like what are you waiting for? You were talking about it in the spring. Uh, springtime we had a bad storm and it busted the roof on this barn and we had to redo the barn so all the money we were saving towards this big project went towards a new roof in the barn which at the time was a much more important project. Now uh, we've been saving all summer long and we're ready to actually get this problem out here solved in a week or so. We're going to be tackling that. So like Kay said, there are a lot of things that we would do differently if uh, looking back. We're, we're kind of, this video we're going to Monday morning quarterback a little bit. You know, we've made some mistakes and looking backwards, it's always easier to pick those out and figure out what you did wrong. And we figured, you know, we're at the point now we have no goats here. But we did go through that experience. We learned a lot of lessons. And for any of you who have or are planning on having goats in the future, uh, maybe you can learn from our mistakes because it's always easier to learn from somebody else's mistakes than yeah. having to go through something like this yourself. Uh, so today we're going to just talk about what we would do different if uh, you know we got goats again. 
So there's really three lessons that we've learned coming out of this that if we get goats again, we will make sure to do things differently. And the first one really has to do with just where we put goats, where would we put goats on this property here? Because I think looking back, uh, that was one of the things that played into their problems the biggest. While I was doing research when these the goats had worms, I came across this really good quote from a parasitologist who said, when, when we look at this lush grass, beautiful pasture, it looks so nice to us. But that for goats is deadly. When on the other hand, we look at kind of barren land, dry barren land, and that looks just not as beautiful to us, that's really where goats should be, if you think about it. Yeah. So moving here, our first thought was great. We're gonna have tons of pasture. The goats can eat the weeds and the cows can eat the grass and everybody will be happy. But looking back, now we realize a lot of this parasite problem uh, was exacerbated because of the fact that they were on pasture and not in like tall, mature woods or on a dry lot. We, we've we owned 20 goats and we've never had such an issue with worms with any of the other ones. Yeah, we've never lost a goat to worms before this, not 18 goats. Yeah, looking back, I was thinking this morning, like where we lived in Squash Hollow, where we kept the goats in, there was no grass. It was very rocky and with mature trees. So none of our other goats, we had ever had to deal with this. So moving here, we thought, wouldn't it be great to have the goats on this grass? These tall weeds that grow, they'd love them. They did like being out there. Yeah. But, and it's not to say you can't put goats on pasture, but of all places, that's where worms thrive is on pasture. And, so Right, it's the hardest to manage them on that's pasture. That's it. It is much easier to manage on a dry lot, mm -hmm. which ironically is both of our does came from a dry lot setup. Uh, or it's easier to manage in the woods on high brows. And as this problem continued to develop, lots of you in the comments section were saying, get them off the pasture, get them in the woods, or get them off the pasture, get them in a dry lot. And the woods section, we wanted to, that was on our like, this fall we're gonna fence in some woods. We just didn't have any good fenced in area. The area we do have is very, very steep and it not doesn't work well for a temporary fencing. So it was gonna be a project we did. Yeah. Uh, when the problems happened then, we did pull them into the dry lot, but I, it just, I think it was just too late for the preventative measures. Right. By the time we had pulled them into the dry lot, it was... And that re that's the easiest way to control worms, or should I say the best way to control worms is just to prevent them. Plus our dry lot, while technically it's not a, what, one of the reasons we're doing this big project it's here. It's a wet lot. It's not a dry lot. There's vegetation growing. Really a dry lot means gravel. Yeah. No growth, no yeah. vegetation. So So if we were to get goats back on the farm, we'd put a we'd put them in the woods. Yeah. They they do great there. There's no low brows for them to get there, so they go up high, which is where goats should be eating is up high where the worms aren't. Yep. So that's the first thing we would do differently. Got a nice <laughs> nice sweep there. A backward sweep. <laughs> you like a ballerina. A baby. Oh, ballerina baby. sweeping. Oh, you get shovel scrape there. Yeah. I'm not really working. I'm faking for the camera. <laughs> the second uh, thing we've learned that if we were to do goats in the future, we would change is where we got our goats from. Uh, not that there was anything wrong with the two goats that we bought or the people we bought them from. Uh, they are, they had awesome operations, they were quality goats. The thing I think we would do differently is we would try to find somebody who is managing their herd pretty much exactly to the way we would be planning on managing here. So my example would be the best person to buy goats from would have been Kay's aunt. If she had had some extra goats to sell, right over the hill there's goats on the same kind of pasture who are not dying of worms. They're able to make it work. They have access over there to a lot of high brows, which is one thing we just talked about, but still they are eating in the pastures that our goats were. They're not dying of worms. They're used to management in this style. Whereas the goats that we got, they were both in a dry lot situation, which they were very healthy goats on a great dry, in a great dry lot situation but then to move them into this situation, 
they weren't able to thrive with that sort of a change. Lacey was in a barn, fed hay. They, she was from a, a dairy goat creamery. They kept their goats inside. Gizmo, kind of the same thing, but outside in a dry lot, there wasn't much pasture there, which was really good for all of their goats. They had very healthy goats. I guess basically the thing I'm trying to say is like, Look at what someone is doing with their animals, how they're managing that herd, and say, is that what I do? And if that's not what I do, maybe I should find someone who's doing what I do more similarly. If they have their animals inside on concrete and you don't want to keep your animals inside on concrete, you probably shouldn't buy from someone who keeps them inside on concrete. All right, and the big one is deworming. deworming. The things we've learned about deworming. Ugh. And I have both kind of immersed ourselves in the world of goat deworming, which is something you could study for years and years and years. I'm having nightmares every night about I'm deworming an animal. I'm holding an animal and it keeps changing. It's a goat, it's a donkey, it's a horse, it's a cow. And I keep giving it wormer, different kinds of wormer and nothing's working. It's getting like sicker and sicker and sicker. <laughs> so I, that kind of, I think, uh, highlights how much we've been thinking about this it's like been this dark cloud over us for the last few months since our dose of kitted. Just trying to figure out deworming. Stop eating that cat food. You're gonna get yourself sick. Get yourself itchy. Up here in December, it's not gonna do so good. What we've learned about deworming. This is a big one for goats. This is like the big one. There you go. Uh, the, when the vet visited us right before Lacey died, he said only smaller ruminants, not the big ruminants like cows. He says specifically these smaller ruminants are the ones who he sees get actually sucked by these parasites sucked dry, yeah. dry till they're dead. He says you don't have that problem in the other livestock. It's really, he said it's sheep and goats. And so if you are getting goats or sheep, get ready. And specifically how we would get ready for it. And this is, this is a tip. Please take this away if you're getting started in goats. Buy a microscope. Yeah, because we could argue for hours here about the best dewormer or whether or not you should use DE versus Cydectin, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's just a discussion for another time. What we've learned is not how exactly to treat them. I mean, obviously we have two dead goats. The key is whatever you do for treatment, you need to be monitoring if it is working. Mm -hmm. So that's DE, that's herbal dewormers, that's Cydectin, that's Safeguard, that's Ivermectin. It's, that's it's, playing classical music to your goats. It's whatever you decide yeah. is gonna, well, I'm gonna do this to deworm my goats. Get a microscope and monitor if those levels are going up or down. That what we learned in the midst of all this happening was if you use a dewormer, you're using two classes generally, if they don't start working and you don't start seeing color coming back into those eyelids within a week, you have to try something else. That's a lot of fecals that add up and you're gonna wanna see the count, the egg counts, and even then it doesn't tell you the whole story. So get your own microscope, yeah. run your fecals, check those eyelids two, three times a week. Some people say even daily if you're checking eyelids. We, our vet charges $30 per fecal, per animal. So every time we did a fecal, then that's not enough. You have to do a fecal follow up, follow up to make sure it's headed in the right track. And really you should continue to do that. So you can picture two, two does, fecals, and then two follow ups, it's $120. Now you can send it to a lab. So it, even if it's $5 for a fecal, if you pay $5 for shipping, $10 per fecal, still within a year, you could have bought yourself a microscope and learned to do it yourself. <laughs> yeah, so, so in the future, if we were to bring goats back onto our homestead, before we did that, we would buy a microscope and we would learn how to do our own fecal egg counts. 
because without it, no matter what you do to deworm your animal, you honestly have no clue if it's working. If you feed your animals pumpkin seeds mm. and you never have a worm problem, that doesn't mean the pumpkin seeds are the solution. It just means you fed them pumpkin seeds and also they don't have a worm problem. If you monitor what's going on in the fecals, then you could actually scientifically show A plus B equals C. And that's our, uh, what killed our goats. And, and you know, I, I kid and I razz a lot and I poke fun at, you know, I call things fairy dust and playing classical music. But we, we've tried everything, right? Uh, what actually killed our goats was trusting too much in a chemical dewormer that is no longer working where we are. We it, Yeah, it changed so much that it worked last year. Yeah. And it didn't work this year. It worked last year so, and so it didn't work this year. So they're just developing resistance even to the new wormer the vet gave us. There's a percentage of worms that have developed a resistance to it already. And if we had been doing very frequent, not just the fecals we sent to the vet, but I mean, we're talking Fecal, 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 keep watching, keep watching. We would have been able to see, oh, this isn't, this isn't working. working. Whereas it took us with Gizmo, we didn't know it wasn't working. She just dropped dead. And Lacey, we could see over time, it was still going downhill and downhill. But it's much better to see it first in the poop than in the animal losing their condition. Yeah. And that's what happened. Yeah. We, by the time we knew, wait a second, this doesn't seem to be working. We got the new vet in, it's too late. Yeah. Hey, you're awake. You wanna take it? Let's just go up. Oh, it's okay. There you go. A little elf. It's good because then I can, we can dump this and then I can put the other big nasty one in. The wheelbarrow. Yeah. Once again, Austin and I do not agree on this. Uh, going forward, our future goat herd, what would it look like? 